What's up, everybody? Today, I wanted to share my thoughts on whether you should or should not combine finances when you get married. And we're gonna go a bit deeper than you should combine your finances because of the tax benefits. First of all, tax savings from being married only benefits you if you have a very high earner and a very low earner because it pulls the tax bracket of the person who earns a lot of money down. And even if you do get tax savings for being married, it's not even a cherry on top. It's like half a sprinkle on the ice cream of marriage. There are so many other benefits to marriage that tax savings is a garbage reason to get married and combine finances. Now here's some common questions around this topic. What if we get divorced? Should we get a prenup? What if my soon-to-be spouse has a substantial amount of debt? What if my spouse doesn't manage money well? Or what if I had a horrible experience combining finances in the past and lost a significant portion of my savings to my ex? I know someone in each one of these situations, so I can empathize with the severity of these questions and how important they are. So rather than telling you what you should do, here are three questions for you and your spouse to talk about together and then come to a conclusion on whether or not you wanna combine finances. Oh, I should mention my wife and I have been married for about six and a half years and these questions have really helped us a lot when it comes to our finances. Question number one, what is the purpose of marriage? The answer to this question will be your foundation for when marriage sucks. If your answer is something along the lines of, well, it's just the next step in our relationship, or because we wanna show everyone that we love each other and that we're committed to each other, that's not going to be a strong enough reason to bring you back together when you are both ready to be done. You need to find an answer together that doesn't depend on how you or the other person feels. If you're having trouble knowing where to start, Talk about the difference between a contract and a promise. A contract can be voided if one person doesn't hold up their end of the deal. A promise is something you fulfill regardless of what the other person does. That should get the conversation moving. Number two, what are the grounds for divorce? Question one should naturally feed into this question. Is there a point at which something happens or things just get so bad that it's best to just call it quits? When my wife and I were getting married, we had someone tell us that there will be seasons of our marriage in which we don't love each other. Not just in love, but actually not love each other. If your grounds for divorce are when we don't love each other anymore, you'll start to see the cracks form a lot quicker than you might think. This question can also lead to some very difficult topics about abuse, cheating, past marriages, poor health, or even something as simple as feeling like your spouse has become a different person over time. I would really encourage you to think about your answer to number one while you're answering this question. And number three, but notice the first two questions had nothing to do with finances. And I would argue that just those two questions should tell you everything that you need to know about the decision to combine finances. Number three is more of a bonus and should be something you talked about with your spouse before you got married, but here it is anyway. What are your financial goals? Money is the second leading cause for divorce. And that probably wasn't even a topic you would have talked about in question number two. If you and your spouse are mismatched on how you handle money, it will make for a very difficult road ahead, especially if you combine finances. Talk about spending habits, car payments, student loans, retirement, savings, tithing, giving, building a house, income goals, trips to Starbucks, shopping, manicures, pedicures, kids, and anything else that comes up. I'll be posting a video tomorrow on how you and your spouse can get on the same page when it comes to finances. So make sure to subscribe so that you can check that video out. I'll end by saying that my wife and I have combined finances, but since we have a very similar mindset when it comes to money, it's made things very easy. But beyond the surface level convenience of combining finances, there's something very unifying about sharing your money with your spouse. And ultimately, I think that's helped us have a stronger marriage. So let me know what you guys think about this. Do you and your spouse combine finances? If you're not married yet, would you even think about combining finances with your future spouse? I'd be curious to know your thoughts, so drop them in the comments. Make sure to check out that video tomorrow on getting on the same page with your finances, and I will see you next time.